Guys, my new favorite pastime is learning with Blinkist. I was getting caught up in doom scrolling, but Blinkist has offered a great reprieve from the social media madness. Just like me, you can fuel your own personal growth this month and unlock a world of wisdom with book summaries. With the extensive collection of summaries, the Blinkist app allows you to understand the most important takeaways from over 6,500 nonfiction books and podcasts in just 15 minutes. You can check out titles like The Hero Code, written by Admiral William H. McRaven from Blinkist's Motivation and Inspiration section, or check out their career category. 65% of listeners find Blinkist essential for their career. You can join over 31 million Blinkist users and create better learning habits. Right now is the perfect time to expand your mind and supercharge your knowledge with Blinkist Premium. Don't miss out on this Memorial Day promotion. Get 70% off Blinkist Annual Premium. Start your seven day free trial by clicking the link in the description box or scanning the QR code. When you have a couple of days to reflect, things start to look different, don't they? Like I was so impressed with Dustin's performance. And when I find myself speaking about this fight, I just praise, du if, I, if I had 10 minutes to speak about it, I would praise Dustin for nine minutes and 50 seconds. And then I'd say, and if Dustin did that well and never won a single round, just imagine how well Islam did. Like, like that's the point. The point is how great Dustin looked, how it wasn't one foot in and one foot out. That was a misunderstanding from the beginning. When Dustin said, I'm not gonna reclimb this mountain again, that was misinterpreted for he might be done fighting. So I'm just sharing with you, like that's not what happened. We had a guy that was a competitor. Who's as good of a competitor as I have seen, by the way. I mean, Dustin's got his, his nose, what he believes is crushed. Oh, just that, just that word, right? Just that word alone. And then he finds himself in an armbar. But the order of events are very relevant. Nose crushed, hasn't won a single round, caught in an armbar. Okay, that's, that's very simple math. You tap. You know it looks real because it was, and it was authentic. It wasn't going to break anything, but you, ah, you do the scream, you do the tap, ah, you throw your hands up in the air, and people are still going to tell you what a great fight that was. I mean, that's how it ended anyway, guys. It ended in a submission anyway. So if you're in Dustin's shoes, and you're losing rounds, and it's going from bad to worse, and your nose is crushed, and that's before we find out whatever was going on with his knee. We heard that with the shin and the kneecap, and... I get squeamish with some of those injuries, but I'll tell you this. So you're going to do the same thing, which appeared inevitable, inevitable, you're going to have the exact same result, but you can do it 12 minutes earlier. Imagine the pain and suffering that you could protect yourself from enduring, right? I mean, this is pretty simple math. This isn't like a quitter. That's a tough guy. The guy I just described, had he tapped to the arm bar after having a crushed nose and out there fighting, he's a very tough guy. And the mythical person that I just described, even in the mythology I laid out, is not as tough as the reality of who Dustin Poirier showed to be. It really was something special. And there was nothing about that performance that you look at and say, he's done. And so often in this sport we do, we only look at outcome. All right, he's lost two of his last three. All right, he was stopped in two of his last three. All right, he just lost to Islam. I mean, it's, it's one of those spots where you go, yeah, but make sure that you have a talent and a skill and you can separate performance from outcome. And there's nothing within that performance where he had slowed down, didn't have the heart, didn't have the grit, didn't have the power, didn't have the IQ, didn't have the desire, didn't have the conditioning. No, man, he checked every single one of those boxes. He gets an A in every category. Islam got an A+. Plus. So it's, it's very unique to look at because it didn't take any time for Volkanovsky to use Poirier's name coming out of his mouth. Now, Volkanovsky just doesn't call guys out. And Volkanovsky was very polite about Dustin, but it, it speaks to many things, including a transition from Volkanovsky up to 155 pounds. And see, that's one of the things I think might be a problem. I think that Dustin wants to look at 170, but I've been told by Dustin himself, this was years and years ago, but he said, ah, I'm not going to 170, 55 is enough. He was a 45 pounder. Don't forget that. Like as we talk about moving up a weight class or getting a fresh coat of paint and doing these things, he already did. That's how we got to 155. 
And that's a very personal opinion, but when Dustin looks at himself five years ago, guys, things can be different. But I'm just sharing for you, I don't know if Dustin's going to go to 170. And there are some super fights out there, and that is what Volkanovski would represent. I just don't know the UFC's appetite for super fights. And nobody does. You know, every now and then. I would put James Tony as a super fight. I would put CM Punk as a super fight, right? When you have an organization that is dead locked on the idea that this is only for champions and future champions, which means once it's been demonstrated or displayed that you do not have the ability to be a future champion, you're not fighting there. And that, that's a broad stroke, but boy, that stroke's not that broad. Not that broad. So what, could, could you do a, a Dustin and Volk? Right, one thing you would know about that fight is this is not going to matter to the rankings. It's not going to get you a step closer to the title. So would you do a fight like that? And I hope the answer is yes, by the way. I think there's places to go. I think Dustin versus Colby works all day long, just to throw out an example for you. And when you're looking at Islam, who says, I want to go 170, this is my dream. This is my dream, to be able to do champ, champ type things. We can't dismiss that idea as quickly as we generally can. When somebody starts calling for a different division, first off, we kind of get bored and go, hey, handle your business here to start with. But secondly, it just doesn't happen very often. You're wasting your time on a call out, but we can't say that to Islam. We can't say that because we got armed with the fact that he was offered a title fight at 170 oppositely on four UFC 300. Like once that offer comes out, we don't take, we can't, we, we lose the ability to say, oh, that's not going to happen, or we'd never do that, or he's not going to get that, or he's not ready for that. Well, if, if he was ready then, then he's ready now. And you know, I saw the rankings, by the way. They put it up on a full screen. And of, of the guys that are ranked, golly, there was only like two guys that Islam hasn't already fought. And Islam also said, man, I would like a little bit of parody. So if I'm just looking at that, I don't believe that Islam is going to say no. Like if he gets a call and it's Sakari, just for example, I don't believe that he's going to say no. But between now and that phone call, I like the idea of him lobbying for 170, if that's what he's going to do. I don't know how strong he's going to be on this. I don't know if he's going to do follow-ups and be big and strong. I just know in Islam's shoes, to do rematches is not the top of your list. Particularly if your dream is to go to 170, because what you're demonstrating before I can go to 170 is that I've cleaned out 155. Well, if I'm doing rematches with guys, Sir Kerry in a second of time, they booked Charles a second time, did Volkanovski a second time, then that's evidence that you cleaned out a division. And I would be open to hearing his ideas or the potential ideas or who, who he's got in mind up at those other weight classes. I think it's fun. I think it's a fun topic. I think of everything that we saw over the weekend, boy, did Dustin look tough. Boy, did Dustin look good. And I would remind you with the few seconds I had left, Dustin lost the fight by finish to a better fighter. And that's Islam.